take this. Oh, no. Oh, you're all caked in all of that goo. There we go. Another wonderful parry. We killed Matt Damon, by the way. <laughs> so, a bunch of people lately has asked me to do a how to parry video. Even though I'm not really that good. Why not just watch YouTube's video about it? He did a whole bunch of research and made calculations and shit. You know, real science stuff. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna break down the exact timings on the different attacks because, let's be honest, that is way too much work. And you're not gonna remember them anyway. So instead, I have compiled a handy list of different ways you can get that easy parry. Now let me be very specific here, this is not a video about how to easily parry anyone, although I might use that as a clickbait title. This is a video about how you can get that easy parry. You see, there are two ways of getting a parry. The MLG Pro way, where you read your opponent's movements, attack patterns and sexual orientation, and use all of that information to predict the exact moment that your opponent is going to attack. That is way too hard for us. That would include actually practicing. And that's boring. So, what we are going to do is take advantage of behavior that we can force out of our prey. We are going to use... Now, drum roll, please. Surprise, motherfucker. Yeah, I couldn't find a drum roll sound effect. Anyway, we're going to use the setup parry. And the best example of a setup parry is the triple B or the Barker bomb bait. Pioneered by the one and the only Adam Barker. Now this is how- uh, Excuse me for a second, lost uh, just move, move for a second. Uh, what's going on guys, it's Adam here. I want to talk to you about the best parry possible, and that is called the Barker bomb bait. Uh, all you do is you throw a bomb, the opponent rolls, it doesn't matter if they're using ultra grades, it don't matter. When they roll an attack, you can parry right after you throw the bomb. Easy wins, and not only do you win the fight, but you win at life. Now, this is a trademark move though, Loss, so uh, you'll be hearing from my lawyers this week to, you know, figure out a deal as to how much money I'm gonna I'm gonna get for you putting putting a Barker Bombay in your video. So uh, I hope that's okay. Well, shit. Anyway, um, you know the, the the reason I use that as an example is because you can you can force your enemy to act predictably. They roll, they attack, and you parry. That's the basic principle of it. Now the shield setup. This is probably the easiest way to get a parry, or the, the, the way you will get the most parries. And if you only learn one thing today, then you may have a learning disability. You should go and check that out. Basically, all you do is block the first swing of a weapon, preferably an axe, and then parry the second hit. I suggest you use the Rusty Iron Shield. It has a good amount of stability, and you won't take that much damage. Now, there is a whole bunch of exceptions to this. If the weapon is a straight sword or a quicker one, then your mouth might end up as a sheath for your enemy's blade. And by blade, I mean penis. Also, your connection needs to be good, so do a few test stabs to make sure you're not fighting somebody playing with a potato. But against a person who are fairly new or who likes to spam that R1 button, this is your go-to move. Then we have the you hit each other at the same time parry. This is the parry that you can do when you and your enemy hit each other at the same time. You really should have figured that one out by its name. When you both are stunned, it may be tempting to keep mashing that R1 button, but instead, throw the parry. Hopefully, your dance partner did not resist the urge, and you get the free parry out of it. Perfect. Then, you have the running attack parry. Now, let's say you manage to put some distance between yourself and some mad lad who are currently rushing towards you, ready to release his running attack. It's natural for people to keep the pressure up with a few additional R1s whenever they get a hit. Well, instead of rolling away, just parry that shit. This is especially easy to bait if you're a small distance away from your target and you take a sip of that sweet, sweet peach tea or Estes or whatever it is that you're drinking. 
You have the rolling attack parry. That's another one. This is just a Barker Bomb bait without the bomb. People have a tendency to attack you right after roll. So just, you just throw out a parry. Just, just parry spam. Listen, seriously, I mean it. If you want to be better at parrying, throw out a bunch of parries, spam it a bunch, and just notice when it works or not. If you're fighting a breakdancer, then wait for the third hit. I know people say that you can parry the second one, but the third one is just so much more easy. Another nice thing to do is, before you actually try to parry, you should try to figure out how good the connection is. Because depending on the potato that your enemy is playing with, you know, parrying might be out of the question. Well, thank you everybody for watching the video. A uh, big thanks to Adam Barker for uh, contributing to this wonderful video. And uh, please, guys, subscribe. After you subscribe to me, go subscribe to Adam as well. He would love you for it. And yeah, that's about it. Thank you so much, and... You know what? You know what? I'm just gonna say it out loud. Gengar is the best Pokémon. I'm just putting that out there. See you guys.